Welcome to worship this Sunday morning, the fourth Sunday of Easter on May 3rd at Shepherd of the Hills Lutheran Church. We will begin with a welcome statement as said by Jeanette. Welcome to longtime Lutherans, Christians from every tradition and people new to the faith. Welcome to all who have no church home, want to follow Christ, have doubts or do not believe. Welcome to new visitors and old friends. Welcome to people of every age and size, color and culture, gender identity, sexual orientation, and marital status, ability, and challenge. Welcome to believers, questioners, and questioning believers. This is a place where you are welcome to celebrate and sorrow, rejoice and recover. This is a place where lives are made new. Welcome on this day. We will now hear the words for the thanksgiving for baptism. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of waters for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the Good Shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross you watered us from Jesus' wounded side. And on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in this font and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. We now have the prayer of the day. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who was raised from the dead to bring everlasting hope, be with you all. And also with you. O oh God, our shepherd, you know your sheep by name and lead us to safety through the valleys of death. Guide us by your voice, that we may walk in certainty and security to the joyous feast 
prepared in your home through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. This is a word for all ages. In a few minutes, you're going to hear Jeanette read from the book of Acts, talking about a new community that came from all who believed in the way of Jesus. They joined together as a caring community. Day by day, they spent time together. Everyone had enough food, shelter, and clothing, and they lived with acts of kindness towards each other. I'm going to share a screen here, and this is the coloring page for uh, today for the fourth Sunday of Easter. And as I said in the text, it says day by day, the people gathered and they shared acts of kindness. And I wonder if you might be able to see a few acts of kindness when you look through this. Well, I see several, so I wonder if you might see the same ones I do, or you might see ones that I have missed. Up front, here's a woman handing out bread. If you can see my cursor. And then up and to the right, you see a family coming in and someone is welcoming them and showing them the way. It also looks like such a loving community that there's people of different ages and colors and sizes and wearing colorful and vibrant clothing. However, I do wonder, what is going over here? Is that an act of kindness? What does that mean that, that this woman is sharing this cloth? I wonder, I don't know. We talk about caring communities. We are people who pray the Lord's Prayer. And in the Lord's Prayer, we pray for our daily bread and the daily bread of each other. Martin Luther tells us that daily bread is everything needed in the necessities and nourishment of our lives, of our bodies. Food, shelter, clothing, home, a sense of belonging, loving, caring family, a community that is at peace and not at war. I wonder what kind of acts of kindness that you're finding now that we are in this time of shelter in place. What things are you doing in your home? What word are you sharing to the community? What things are you doing? I wonder. I do know that in this community, we are having acts of kindness among each other. And we are having acts of kindness out towards the community to people in need. Sam serves on the board of the Dorothy Day House. And this month's off thank offering goes to the Dorothy Day House, who helps people who are not in homes, who are in need of food. Angela has been organizing food to be dinners to be made by the um, Kensington Cafe that goes to the yay shelter. It's a win-win situation. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for inspiring us to be people who share your love. Help us always to follow you in your way. Amen. The first reading is from Acts chapter two. The baptized devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. 
The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to Thanks God. Thanks be to God. Please rise and body your spirit for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and teach them. When he has brought out his own, he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of the stranger. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God, our Creator, Christ, our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our Sustainer and our Guide. What a great day to be at Shepherd of the Hills Lutheran Church on this Good Shepherd Sunday. We begin today with the words of the 23rd Psalm, this beautiful ancient psalm that proclaims God's restoration of our souls, of God guiding us through the darkest times with abundance and continues to be with us forever. This is a word of salvation, healing, spaciousness, and wholeness. It's a psalm that you just want to breathe in 
and feel its healing words as it flows in and out of our body and into our communities and the communities throughout the world. We hear of the story of the people in Acts, a new Christian community that gathers together day by day, generously sharing with each other. And it says more came to be saved. We're gonna talk about being saved a little further down the line, but they came to be saved. When I think of Good Shepherd Sunday, I tend to think of the story of Jesus going out after the lost sheep, you know, leaving the 99 and finding that one that's lost. I don't usually think of the message about the gate and the gatekeeper. But that is our message here in John 10. Unfortunately, this idea of gate has been misused through the centuries. For many, the feeling of exclusiveness comes up. There is a gate that kind of says who's in and who's out. It promotes a tribal way of thinking. It's been exclusive to people who are LGBTQIA, immigrants, and others. It's a narrow view of God's abounding love when it's interpreted that way. It's a distortion. But the overall message, true message, is to get clear about the identity of Jesus and to protect the integrity of that identity and the community. You know, being a shepherd isn't a job to romanticize. It requires grit, or as people from Finland say, sisu. It requires commitment, perseverance, risk-taping for the purpose of keeping a community safe by keeping those out who would harm it. Some of you heard me talk about the Zoom bombing at University Lutheran Chapel on Easter Sunday, where people entered into that space and began saying homophobic and racist comments and showing unwelcome pictures. The people acted quickly to escort those who were unwanted out of that room. They acted fiercely to protect that community and that space. In this time of transition, it's important to ask questions, lots of questions, but primarily questions about who we are, why do we do what we do, what is our identity, what kind of shepherd shall we be? I wonder, has anybody ever read the job description of a shepherd? Well, King David gives one back in the book of Samuel. You see, King David was a young boy, and he was at the time when the Philistines came to fight Israel, and their battle camps are laid out, and David is sent to bring food to his brothers, and he sees the giant Goliath as he nears King Saul's camp, and he sees that giant Goliath come out with his armor on and his weapons, and he taunts the soldiers of Israel. Who dare come out and fight me, Goliath says, and not one Israelite soldier has decided to do so yet. So David gives his food to his brothers and others and then goes to King Saul and says, let me do it. Let me go and fight Goliath. Of course, King Saul says, you know, that's rather silly, boy. This is a seasoned soldier and you are just a lad. But David speaks up quickly and says, I'm a shepherd. And as a shepherd, when a lion or a bear comes and grabs one of the sheep by the neck, I chase it down, I strike it, and I pull that sheep from its mouth. What could King Saul do after a credentials like that? He allows David to go out. David goes out with no armor, a staff, a slingshot. Goliath is, Goliath is struck down. The war is ended. The people are saved. They can return to their lives and living together, making a life for themselves and their children and the whole community. They are saved, not by the act of a mighty garrison of soldiers, but by a youth with a slingshot and the job description of a shepherd. 
brings to the question, what does salvation mean? What does being saved here mean? That we've heard repeatedly in the book of Acts, alluded to in the Psalm, and also said in the book of John, that Jesus opens the gate and allows them to enter into the pasture that they might be saved. There's an old definition of salvation that floats around in Christian communities in the United States, and that's the idea that one is saved from the fiery deaths of hell. It's promoted many a deathbed uh, confession, many a deathbed people entering into the church. But perhaps it's a good time to think about that again for the church in general and for this whole community of Shepherd of the Hills. What does salvation mean? For the early church, it meant a new way of being, a loving community together in a not so safe world. What could we consider? Dan Erlander, a Lutheran pastor, has some helpfulness here. He says salvation is rooted in the word spaciousness and related to words of liberation, wholeness, and healing. And he gives us some examples. He says, for example, an enemy attacks a city and the enemy is repelled. The people are able to go ahead with their lives. They marry and have children. They plant and they reap. They take care of animals. They have holidays and festivals. This is salvation, spaciousness, and wholeness. The rich and powerful repent. They get their heads around the effect of this way of living and the effect it has on the poor and disenfranchised. People are fed and given food and dignity. This is spaciousness, wholeness and salvation. Someone is healed from an illness that has kept them outside a community or healed from, from being separate. They are liberated from what was ever keeping them apart. They are out of their isolation and they are no longer have the feelings of worthlessness. This is salvation, spaciousness, and wholeness. The power of death is broken by Jesus being raised from the dead. No longer do we need to live in intimidation or fear of death, for God is with us. This is salvation, spaciousness, wholeness, healing, liberation. As we gather together, what are the stories of salvation that this community, Shepherd of the Hills Lutheran Church will say, what are your stories? What do you define as salvation? What will it be as we are people gathering together to do our best through this time and being there for each other? May God restore us with healing, salvation, spaciousness, and wholeness. Amen.
Please now join me in reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We will now have the prayers of the people. Uplifted by the promised love of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Shepherding God, we thank you for the educational ministries of your church. Enrich the work of teachers, professors, mentors, advisors, and faculty at colleges, seminaries, and learning sites. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creating God, we praise you for those who maintain and operate farm equipment, for those who plant and harvest crops, for local farmers markets, and for those involved in agriculture of any kind. Strengthen their hands as they feed the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guiding God, no one should be in want. Bid the nations to return to your paths of righteousness and inspire our leaders to walk in your ways so that all may have the opportunity to live abundantly and sustainably. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comforting God, you carry us tenderly. We pray for those who walk through dark valleys overshadowed by anxiety and overwhelmed with suffering, especially Gina and Carol, Stanley, Michaela, and Ev Marie. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Nurturing God, you desire justice for the hungry. Bless advocacy work, food pantries, and feeding ministries in our congregations. May none of our neighbors lack for basic needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Everlasting God, you are beloved, have heard your voice. You have called them by name and guided them to your side in death. We thank you for their lives of faithful witness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, Mother in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial <clears throat> and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now prepare for the blessing. We will have announcements made uh, during our Zoom coffee hour. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
Christ is risen, just as he said. Go in peace, share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thank you.